Welcome back, fellas. Here we are. And uh, we're mid-mission right now, working towards becoming the strongest version of ourselves here in the King Transformation Program uh, through the War on Vice campaign. And so our efforts are all aimed towards overcoming vices in our lives because they hold us back from being the strongest version of ourselves. And, um, and it's a battle. It's a spiritual battle. It's a physical battle. It's a battle of wits. It's a battle of will. And, uh, and it's a worthwhile battle. It is our war. It is the war of our generation. And it's, it's against effeminacy and vice. So it's an internal war. When I say it's a spiritual war, I mean, it's an, inner, it's an internal war, meaning we're going to war against uh, all of the seductive vices that are constantly shown to us and promoted to us, you know. They're making weed legal in like every state. Of course, alcohol, people are, more people die of alcohol poisoning or alcohol related deaths than practically anything else besides heart disease. Pornography is ever present, omnipresent and in your pocket. Uh, all these things, man, they, they're designed to make men weak. Stefan Arneo <laughs> in his book, uh, Hard Times Create Strong Men, he says this about video games, but it really relates to uh, a lot of what we struggle with as men in this world. He says, um, men solve problems. That's what we do. That's our nature as men. We solve problems, right? That's why when we're talking with a, with a woman and she's got a problem, we're thinking like, how can I solve How can I help her solve this problem? Where she's thinking, I just want to be heard, right? So that's kind of where we get messed up sometimes. But men solve problems. We're problem solvers. We look for problems to solve. He says, men solve problems and video games solve the problem of men. And so does dating apps, so does uh, promiscuity and fornication. I know it sounds crazy because we've taken it so for granted since the 1960s, but how many men have destroyed their lives chasing tail, right? Chasing women will destroy you. Either you're chasing digital women on the screen and you're spilling your seed all over the place, which is devitalizing, dehumanizing, emasculating towards men. Um, and it's, it's, it's promoted as something liberating, which it is anything but liberating when you become a slave to sin, right? How liberating is it when you're a slave to this stuff, right? I watched a, a video from Brandon Carter yesterday. I was just checking out his stuff. He's an old friend. And uh, he showed a graph of what happens to the brain, how you get brain damaged. Uh, there was somebody that was using weed. There was somebody that was on pornography. There was somebody, uh, you know, just brains, brain scan, brain, like 3D brain images of people that use alcohol, even infrequently, even infrequent use of alcohol, meaning like once a week or whatever, it changes the brain, it destroys the brain. We're literally brain damaged as a result of our vices, men, you know, and it's all, it all comes packaged in this frame of liberation, have fun, relax, right? Let down, let loose, right? Or bury your, bury your problems, right? That's, a, that's another one, right? Like we don't want to confront our issues so, Hey, let me just get hammered tonight and at least I can go to sleep without anxiety. All designed to destroy. It's warfare. These, this is like unconventional warfare, if you will, right? I have this book, Unconventional Warfare. And it's about, it's about it's, I haven't read it yet, but Unrestricted Warfare. This means like everything's on the table when it comes to destroying a society. This is what the Bolsheviks did uh, with, with the Marxist revolution in the West. Cultural Marxism is a weapon. You know, most college students are, you know, most young people coming out of college and thinking that, that, you know, they're enlightened through these woke ideologies, not realizing, you know, that was a weapon. <laughs> woke ideologies is a, is a psychosocial weapon to destroy a society. No society thrives when the men are blowing their loads in plastic bags, women are killing their babies, and children are cutting their dicks off. <laughs> And they, those are just the sexual sins. How is a society supposed to be generative, to regenerate, if they're not honoring their genders? Right? It doesn't make sense, right? And when they're cutting off their genitals, right? It's a war. And anybody, and I know I'm preaching to the choir. I know you guys know this stuff. But you know, we're living in a world where uh, the agents of war live on our home. Feminist women and transgender kids and you know, dads are uh, kind of like shrugging their shoulders and not sure what to do. What do we, what do we do? You're at war. You're at war. So what do you do when you're at war? You battle. And the battle, this kind of battle, this kind of battle, fellas, requires that we begin not on the outside, right? And this is, the, the, the cultural Marxists understood this too. They said that we can't take the West down with bombs and bullets. 
And we're not going to fight back with bonds and bullets. It's a subtle, unrestricted warfare. And it's a and basically it's a war for your soul. If I can if I can rot you with vice and wrong think, group think, then I don't need to kill you. I can let you I will convince you to kill yourself, right? Cut off your penis. It's empowering. Take this shot. It's for your safety, right? You know, the, even like the, the, uh, the USDA food pyramid is a weapon. How do these people who are scientists not know that eating that much carbohydrates and, and restricting restrict, uh, saturated fats actually makes you fat and weak and sick and have low testosterone? How do they not know that? These are smart people. These are brilliant people. Well, when the enemy owns the universities, which they do, when the enemies own the government, which they do, when the enemy owns the media, which they do, they convince you that what's wrong is right. And what's right is wrong. And that's where we are today. What's right is denigrated. Oh, you must be a misogynist. You must be a racist. You must be a, you know, they'll give you all kinds of different names, right? You're a bigot. When really, in fact, it's like, no, I, we're just actually trying to relate to life by the natural law and to live as human beings in the manner in which we were created. That's all we're trying to do. We're trying to be the best version of ourselves. But you're here, down here, you're over here stuffing all kinds of propaganda down our throats and destroying our culture as a result. I, there's this funny meme. I sent it to my kids the other day. It was like uh, a kid, like just, you know, just sitting there. And it was like kids trying to learn mathematics at school. And then it was like this big clown or something or some, I don't know, I can't remember exactly what it was, like shouting in the kid's face. Some men can have babies. Kids just trying to learn, he's just trying to learn his arithmetic. Some men have babies, you know? It's like, why, what, what's the point even? What's the point even to teach my kid that? Like, how is that going to help him? It's not about helping. Even the marketing, have you seen what happened with like a Budweiser, Bud Light? You know, they had the transgender, right? And I'm not, I'm not hating people. I'm just pointing out how dumb we are. Um, they, and then the same trans, the Mulvin Devaney, Devaney Mulvin or some shit like that. It's some guy who's become very popular for acting like a woman. These corporations, these woke corporations are losing money. They're losing, they're losing customers. And it's been ongoing. It makes you wonder. It's like, why are all these, why are all these corporations promoting stuff that's, basically unpopular and making them like the, like the NBA, right? Like no one gives a shit anymore. Like the, like the Super Bowl or like a lot of these like Grammy awards and stuff. Like nobody's watching this shit anymore. Nobody's buying their products anymore. Why do they keep pushing this agenda? It's because they have no choice. In fact, I read an article on uh, naturalnews.com the other day that was like, these corporations really actually don't have a choice. They're forced to abide by this uh, narrative uh, otherwise, they, they can be penalized. They were talking about like tax, like the IRS is like penalizing some of these countries, some of these um, companies. So it makes you wonder. It's like, this is not good for business. It's not good for the society. It's not good for people. It's not good for children. It's not good for women. It's not good for families. Uh, damn sure it ain't good for men. Why are we doing it? What are we doing? Why are we doing this? Uh, warfare, warfare, warfare. Don't forget, fellas, we are living in a time of war, but it's subtle war. It's a subtle war. It's a spiritual war. It's a, it's a war for the hearts and minds of people. And ultimately, you convince people to kill themselves. You make people, check out the ultimate, here's, here's the, there are so many different peaks, but here's another one. Here's one that kind of is weird. When you teach your enemy that they're the bad guy and that they should hate themselves, you don't have to do anything. You convince a race of people that the predominant race of people in a particular country that they are evil. You are evil and you should be ashamed of yourself for being that way. You don't have to take them down. They take themselves down. You know about white people in America and Europe too. They're, they're, they're silly. They, they, it's self-loathing, but it's a part of the plan. It's a part of the attack, right? You should be ashamed of yourself because 400 years ago, white people had slaves. Well, they forget to mention that, oh, but you know, brown people have slaves today too. Black people have slaves today too. And the funniest thing, I'm ranting right now, I'm gonna be done here in a minute. The funniest thing too is they never remind you that, you know, it was actually white people that got rid of slavery. Like it just kept going on. It's been going on forever. It's still going on. But the very people that said, you know what? <laughs> this might not be a good idea. We should probably stop. They're the ones that are most demonized for it. 
they didn't stop slavery in other countries and, you know, Middle East and Africa where a lot of it happened. You know, Arab slavery, they're still doing it. Nobody says anything about that. But in the very countries, the very cultures that say, you know what, it's probably a bad idea to do this. We should stop. They're the ones that are, they point, point it at them. It's a part of the war. It's a part of the war. Make you, if I make my enemy hate himself, denigrate himself, and stop reproducing himself, and tell him that he's a cancer on the planet, right? And this is all of us. All human beings are convinced through this green propaganda. And I'm not against recycling. <laughs> you know, get me wrong. But that because you breathe and fart, you're destroying the planet? That doesn't make any sense. And it's not even logical, right? Like if plants breathe in carbon dioxide and human beings breathe out carbon dioxide, why are we trying to have less of a carbon footprint since all the green stuff needs carbon to live? Maybe I'm just, you know, I'm not a scientist. But to me, that actually sounds, it's pretty asinine. But there's a lot of asinine shit that we just take for granted in our culture. Gain total self-mastery and control over your drinking, drugs, overeating, or viewing filth on your phone forever. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot Hulse here. And if you're seeing this ad, it's because I want to help you. If you're a married man who owns a business but struggle to overcome those late night vices that you're trying to hide from the world, including your wife, clients, and colleagues, whether it's drinking, drugs, overeating, or viewing filth on your phone, all these vices that you're trying to hide, you know they're killing you on the inside. Plus, crippling your business and failing your family. If you're ready to destroy vice and dominate life, then click the link in this YouTube ad. Because for the first time in my 17 years on YouTube, I have a program that not only makes men strong, but has the power to fix families, repair businesses, and restore faith in a world gone wild. But it all starts with men like you who are ready to take action. Now, I don't have enough time to explain how it works here in this short clip, which is why I put together a four minute video for you to watch on exactly how it works. So click the link here, watch the video now, it's completely free. And if you're ready to destroy vice and dominate life, and be the man that you're called to be, I'll see you on the inside. Done.